Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Let's continue with the second part of array where we will look at the two-dimensional array. To recap, in the last part, we have looked at how to declare and create an array by writing the data type, then the square brackets after the data type or after the array name equal to new data type and the size of the array within the square brackets. To initialize the values when we declare it, we can use the braces and the values separated by comma. Otherwise, we can refer to the index number and assign the value. Also, to get the size of the array, we can use the instance variable called length. In this part, let's look at two-dimensional array. In two-dimensional array, the components are arranged in rows and columns. Similar as before, in the one-dimensional array, they need to be of the same type. We can represent two-dimensional array in a table form with several rows and columns. To declare and instantiate a two-dimensional array, we can write it as data type, square bracket, and then another square bracket, array name, equal to new data type, and then within the first square bracket refers to the row, and the second square bracket refers to the column. For example, we can have double square bracket, another square bracket sales, equal to new double, and then within the first square bracket, the value 10, and the second square bracket, the value 15 where it will have 10 rows and 15 columns. Similar as what we can write within our one-dimensional array, we can have the square brackets after the array name. Apart from having rows and columns, two-dimensional array is similar to one-dimensional array. Same as before, all the elements in two-dimensional array also have the default value. For example, for type double, the default value is 0.0. .0. For int, it would have the default value of 0. This table here shows that we have 10 rows, which is numbered as index 0 until 9, and 5 columns numbered as index 0 until 4. To access a component of a two-dimensional array, we need to write the array name, and then in the first square bracket is the row position, the index number of it, and the second square bracket is the index of the column position. For example, if we have sales in square bracket 5 and in another square bracket 3 equal to 25.75, it means that we want to store the value 25.75 into row at index number 5 and column index number 3 which is the 6th row and the 4th column. This can be shown in this table here to see it clearer, where we have the value 25.75 is at index number 5 in the row and index number 3 for the column. Similar to one-dimensional array, we can initialize the two-dimensional array during declaration and use the braces. But because it's two-dimensional, we need to have several braces to separate the rows. We start off with opening braces, then another braces for the first row and close it. For each row, we have to write the comma. As highlighted here, it shows the rows and the values in the rows and columns. For example here, we can write int square bracket another square bracket and we call our array as pod equal to opening braces that refers to the array then another braces for the first row and values for each of the columns in the first row separated by comma. We have at the first row the value 2 at column 0 so the value 3 at column 1 and the value 1 at column 2. To initialize the next row we need to have a comma to separate the rows. In the second row, we will have another braces and the values within the braces will be for the second row at column 0, column 1 and column 2. Similarly, for the third row and fourth rows, remember to close the braces that we have for the whole array. The table here shows the values in rows and columns based on the initialization. You can write all of this line within one line. 
we normally put it in different lines just to make it easier to read. Whatever that we do with one dimensional array, we can do it with the two dimensional array, such as initialize the values, print, take input from the users and doing any kind of calculation. Say that we have int row, int column and the two dimensional array called as int matrix square bracket and the square bracket equal to new int, the row that we have is 7 and the column that we have is 6. In two dimensional array, we have to access each row first then each columns within the row. So we can use the nested for loop. The outer for loop will go through the rows and the inner for loop is for the column. As to what we have learned and seen when we were in the for loop topic, when we have nested loop, it will finish up the inner loop before going back to the outer loop. Looking back at this code, in the outer for loop, we use matrix.length where it will show the size of the rows, which is 7. Each of the rows have several columns, so that's why we write matrix in square bracket row dot length. It is possible to have rows with different number of columns. For example, we have int number square bracket and another square bracket equal to on the first row we have the value 1, 2, 3 and on the second row the value 4 and 5. From here we know that we have two rows and several columns. In the first row, it has three columns, the value 1, 2 and 3. On the second row, it has only two columns, which are the value 4 at column 0 and the value 5 at column 1. This is shown within the table on your left side. So within the second row, we cannot access the third column. If we do number and the first square bracket, we have row 1 and on the second bracket, we have column 2. It will give us an array index out of bound exception because we don't have column 2 for the second row, which is row 1. This is shown in the red box. So to be safe, see that we have this kind of situation. We can always use the variable length, such as matrix in the first square bracket row dot length, so that the size for the column or the rows is not fixed, and it can be changed accordingly based on the rows itself or the columns. For example, if we run this code, it will display the size of the row, size of the column, and the elements at each part of it. So the size is changed accordingly. From the output here, when it goes through the first row, it will say that the length of the row is 2 and the column that it has is 3 and the value of it is 1. And then on the second line, the same thing for the row, the first row, it has the length of 2 and the column has the value of 3 and the number is 2. The same thing for the last number within the same row, which is 3. It then increased the value of the row, so now we are going to the second row, which is at row index 1. So over here, the size of the column is 2, it's no longer 3. So it will display the value, there are 2 rows and then 2 columns and the value of 4 and 5 as being highlighted in yellow here. Try and run this code to make sense of it. Going back to the example from the start, here we have this code and it says that it is currently at row 0, it will loop through the inner for loop and go through row 0, column 0 and then row 0, column 1 still on the same row, row 0, column 2, until it gets to the end. After that, it increments the value of row, so row becomes 1. It goes back to the inner loop and repeat the same as previously. So at row 1, column 0, row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, and so on. So it will always do the inner for loop before going back to the outer for loop. The same thing to print all the elements in the two-dimensional array. We have to go through for each row 
and then all the columns within the row. So we can use nested for loop where the inner for loop in accessing the columns and the outer for loop for the rows. You can also do it the other way around, meaning that the outer for loop is for columns and the inner for loop is for rows. You can try it out yourself. Let's look at this example on how to display the value of our two-dimensional array. Here we have a two-dimensional array called matrix. The first row has the value 11, 12 and 13. So the value 11 is at row 0, column 0, 12 is at row 0, column 1 and 13 is at row 0, column 2. The same goes for the second row and third row. The values for each rows and columns are shown here in the table so that it is easier to see it. In the for loop here, the outer for loop will check the rows. The inner for loop will check the columns for each row. Here it will go through row 0, then column 0, column 1, and then column 2. Then it exits the inner for loop and increases the value of row by 1. So row becomes 1. It will repeat the inner for loop and goes through all the columns in row 1. Then it will do the same for row 2 going through column 0 until column 2. In this code here, as we have system the out dot print line in the outer for loop, that's why in the output there is an empty line for that. This is being shown by the red arrows. Try and run this code and see if you get the same output as being shown here. Instead of fixing the values for the array, we can also ask the user to enter their values. We will ask for each column within the rows. For example, if the array has 3 rows and 3 columns, this means we will ask the user to enter the value for row 0, column 0, row 0, column 1, and also row 0, column 2. Then we would ask the same for row 1 at column 0 until column 2, and then for the next row as well. Let's look at this example where we have reading the values from the user and then displaying them at matrix in the square bracket row and square bracket column equal to scan.nextInt, it will be repeated until all values for each rows and columns are typed in. So, if the user enters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it will keep all those numbers accordingly as we have stated that we have 3 rows and 3 columns. If we print out the values according to the rows, it will display on row 0 the value 1, 2, and 3, on row 1, the value 4, 5, and 6, and row 2, the value 7, 8, and 9. The same goes when trying to find the largest element within the row. Here, it only compares the value of the columns at each row because the system the order print line is within the outer for loop. So, for the values 11, 12, 13, which is in the first row, the largest element is 13. In row 2, the largest number is 23. And in row 3, the largest number is 33. If we write system the out dot print line outside of the for loops, it will show the largest element for the whole array. So it depends what do you want the program to do. To summarize, we have looked at two dimensional array where the components are arranged in rows and columns. To declare or instantiate a two-dimensional array, we can write it as the data type, two square brackets, the array name, or we can also write the square brackets after the array name, equal to new data type, and then the first square bracket refers to the row, and the second square bracket refers to the size of the columns. We have looked at examples on how to use and read the rows and columns using nested for loops.